Hello. Before we go on to look at um, some worked examples of what we've seen so far, I've got just a few more tips for you, and these, most of them relate to the course specifically. First of all, the source code. If you go to github.com slash cave of programming, uh, this is where I keep my public source code. Uh, so you, you can look at this, uh, look at whatever you want, but if you click on repositories and then go to find Java Beginners 11 in the list, click on that, you can find here all the source code that we're working on. Um, so if I want to see this source code, I can actually browse it and see it here, which is helpful. Um, I noticed that when, when I provide these repositories, um, some people want to download the whole thing and then build all the applications. I would recommend not doing that. You can do it if you want to. Um, but I would recommend not downloading it because you don't learn anything like that, really. Uh, what this is best used for is just consulting it um, if you've got something wrong somewhere and you can't figure out what it is. Uh, of course, you can look back at the video, but it's probably easier to look at this source code in many cases. So um, take, take a look at that, and if you keep it open while you work, then you can refer back to it. Uh, okay, so um, uh, a second um, thing that I'm going to say here is to get the most out of the course, always type out code and experiment with it. So you, c you can't learn programming just by watching videos. Um, it's like learning the piano or the violin or learning a human language for that matter. Um, if you just watch videos, y you aren't going to learn it. What you have to do is use the videos as a source of in inspiration and information. Type any code that I type in the videos. Make sure at some point you type it out yourself. And even better, try to think, how could you change that code without breaking the program? Try to make some meaningful change to it. Experiment with it. And the more you do that, the more you'll learn. You will find sometimes you'll create bugs and errors. Maybe you won't be able to fix them. But um, if you spend some time trying to figure out why your program doesn't work, even if you never actually figure out why that is at this stage, all the time you spend doing that, puzzling over it, will really help. Especially if, rather than just looking at it, you also experiment with it. Try outputting the values of variables you know, try to try to experiment with it, kind of physically change the code, try to get it to work and to run. But the main thing here is type everything out and also experiment with it a little bit. Try to change it um, and still have it run in a meaningful way and do something useful. Uh, because you won't learn just by watching videos. Um, it's a practical skill like learning the piano. Uh, let's take a look at this one. So I would say focus on practice, not memorization or notes. And the reason that I say this is because I've seen beginners try to learn programming by, like they have a lesson or they watch some videos and they make endless notes on it or they try to, they, they really strain their brains trying to memorize everything. And um, I would say that's not an effective way to learn. The effective way to learn is to practice. Think of it just like learning the guitar or whatever. You've got to practice. Practice is the key to it. So don't worry too much about memorizing things. Don't worry too much about making notes. But practice everything. So everything that you want to learn, you have to actually try it out yourself. Check that it works. Experiment with it a little bit. If you do that enough, you will learn programming bit by bit. You may sometimes feel very puzzled, but eventually you'll get the hang of it. And it's really a question of how much time you spend doing that. You have to practice. Uh, and it, uh, a, lot, a lot of practice is going to be needed. But the good news is that after a certain point, programming tends to be addictive. People tend to get addicted to it and time flies by. Not everyone has that experience, but many people do. That you start writing programs and when you reach a certain level of fluency, um, you, you get into this state of mind where you're just curious and you think, well, I could add, I could add this new feature to this program, see if that works. And it becomes an addictive process for many people. And that can really help with the practice. If you're addicted to something, of course, you'll practice it a lot. 
don't forget to go outside though, you know, and take breaks. Don't screw yourself up with programming, but um, practice is the key. And finally, uh, this is optional. Learn to touch type. Touch typing means being able to type um, on your keyboard without looking at the keyboard. Now, I think only about half of all programmers for a guess have this skill. And the others do what we call hunting and pecking. They hunt and peck. So they keep looking down at their keyboard. They use one, two, three, however many fingers. And they just type the um, characters one by one. That's fine. It's totally fine. But if you want to learn even faster, then learn to touch type. You can find free touch typing programs on the internet. If I search for free touch typing, um, you can find various links here to to programs online that you use on the internet that teach you to touch type. And it's actually not that hard to learn to touch type. Probably most people can do it um, in a few weeks or less, especially if you start touch typing your emails. It's difficult at first to make the transition from hunting and pecking to touch typing, but um, you can learn this quite, qu quite quickly. And when you've learnt it, your typing speed will increase a lot. Now, although typing speed isn't a big deal in programming, um, you can type slowly and, you know, you're still going to you're still going to be writing programs. Uh, programming is not primarily about typing speed. It's not so important. But a major reason that people get discouraged with programming is they just feel it's taking them too long and too much effort to write code. So they avoid writing code. And you can learn a lot more effectively if you touch type for this reason, in my opinion. You can learn faster because you're less discouraged from writing code. You don't think, well, how long will it take me to type out total height or, you know, how long? You don't think like that. Instead, you think and your fingers do the typing, more or less. So touch typing can help make you less reluctant to type code. And by doing that, it makes it easier to learn coding. Nevertheless, that is optional, and probably half of all programmers, something like that, they just hunt and peck. They don't learn touch typing, so it's up to you. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.